Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering asthma prevention and treatment. I'm going to go over the most important medications that you have to know for asthma. So before I get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support my channel, help my channel grow by liking this video, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So guys, let's get started. The first drug, I put a number one next to it. The first drug that we're going to start with are the bronchodilators. Before I get started, all the time in the comment section, I always um, see a comment asking which book I'm teaching out of. So for this video, this is the book. It's beaten up. So it's Medical Surgical Nursing by Ignatavius eighth edition. It's an old book, but it's a goodie, very good book. So if you guys need a good med surge book, I would encourage you guys to get this book, get the earth, um, the latest edition if possible. I'm just using the eighth edition, but, um, it's a real good for a uh, real good book for med surge. Okay. So anyway, let's start with the bronchodilators. Now the first bronchodilator we're going to go over, we're going to go over the SABA, S-A-B-A. -A. That's a short acting bronchoagonist, okay? Albuterol, albuterol, proventil, ventolin. Now something important you need to know about the SABAs, again, they are short acting. The SABAs, such as albuterol, it's... um for immediate relief. If the patient's having an asthma attack, right, it will offer immediate relief. Immediately, it will open up the airway. So let's take a look. Um, for the patient that's taking a SABA, again, it's a fast acting rescue inhaler. You're going to teach the patient to carry the drug with them at all times, because guess what? They don't know when they're going to have an asthma attack. So keep it with them at all times. Tell, teach the patient to monitor their heart rate. And I put an up arrow because that medication can cause tachycardia. When taking this drug with other inhaled drugs, look at this. Teach the patient to use this drug at least five minutes before the other inhaled drugs. That's very important. That's been seen on NCLEX many times. Now, why is that important to take it five minutes before other drug? Well, guess what? If a patient's taking an inhaled drug, that drug's being inhaled, it has to go through the airway, right? So we're going to give them something that's going to open up the airway. So when they take that second inhaled drug, it'll actually be absorbed. It makes sense. So you're going to teach them to take the Saba first, wait five minutes, and then take the other inhaled drug. That's important to know. And teach the patient the correct technique for using an MDI or DPI. Now, the thing about the MDI, that's been seen on NCLEX very often as well. And usually, let me tell you how they'll ask you. They'll give you the steps on how to use an MDI and with the mouse you have to put in order. I'm almost 100% sure I already did a video on the steps. So go back and watch that. I know I did. I just don't remember the title of the video, but I did go over the steps for using the MDI. Make sure you guys know it because like I said, usually it's like a drag and drop or put in correct order. Okay. Now, next, let's talk about the LABAs. L-A-B-A. -A. So these are long acting bronchoagonists. They also open up the airways, but they don't work immediately. Okay, these are the medications that the patient's going to be taking twice a day, every 12 hours, and that's something that the patient's going to take for immediate relief. Because by the time this bad boy starts working, if the patient's having an asthma attack, asthma attack, asthma attack, they'll be long gone, six feet under already. So the uh, LABA, the long-acting be uh, beta agonist, examples, your semiterol, okay? Look at the action, look at the... The action. Onset of action is slow with long duration. So remember, this is not something you're going to take if you're currently having an asthma attack. And it's used for prevention of an asthma attack. You're going to teach the patient to shake the inhaler MDI well before using. Teach patient to not use the drug as a reliever. That is so important. And you see, I put a star next to it. So you know, it's important to know if the patient's having acute symptoms, that's not what they need to be taking. Because remember, the the onset is very slow. They need to take a short acting bronchoagonist. Teach a patient the correct technique for using the MDI. Again, guys, make sure you guys know the correct technique. Next, we have our cholinergic antagonists. What are those? Our anticholinergics. 
Remember those clinical manifestations that they can produce? Can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't... Yeah, those. So let's take a look. What does it do? It allows symp a sympathetic um, system to dominate. It releases norepinephrine. Examples are your hypertropians su such as atrovent. Atrovent, excuse me. You're going to teach the patient to carry this with them at all times. Teach them to shake the MDI well before using. Teach the patient to increase daily fluid intake. Why? Because it dries you up. And so you want the patient to drink lots of fluids. Um, teach the patient to observe for and report blurred vision. Remember, can't see, blurred vision, blurred vision, can't spit, that's the dry mouth, can't pee, that's the uh, um, urinary retention, can't, that's the constipation. So you're going to teach them about blurred vision because they're on this med. You think it's a good idea to be driving a car or operating heavy machinery if they have blurred vision. So you're going to make sure you teach them that. Teach them about eye pain, headache, nausea, palpitations, tremors. Palpitations, tremors. Look at the signs and symptoms. Again, remember, look what it says here. Allows the sympathetic system to dominate. That S in sympathetic is for what? Speeding up. Increase pulse. Increase heart rate, right? Teach the patient the correct technique for using MDI or DPI. Number three are anti-inflammatories, and that's pretty um, self-explanatory. They help decrease inflammation. Now, impor something important to know about the anti-inflammatories, they do not cause bronchodilation like our SABAs and our LABAs do. They just decrease the inflammation. Number four. Are corticosteroids such as fluticasone? What do that? What does the? What do the corticosteroids do? They prevent an asthma attack that's caused by inflammation. Now I've talked to you guys about steroids a million times, so you know off rip when it comes to steroids, we're going to be concerned about a couple things, right? We're going to be concerned about. Um, signs and symptoms of infection. We're going to be concerned about um, mouth care or hygiene, especially because they're they are going to be in, um, inhaling this medication. We're going to be teaching them good mouth care. Let's take a look at nursing intervention. It says, teach the patient to use a drug daily. Look at this, even when no symptoms are present. So the corticosteroid, it's not like the SABA where we teach that patient to take that medication when they're symptomatic, right? With the corticosteroids, we tell them to teach, take it daily, even when they're not having any symptoms. Why? Because this is part of the regime for what? Maintenance therapy, just like Lalaba is maintenance therapy. Teach the patient to use good mouth care and to check their mouth daily for lesions or drainage. Why? Take a look. This reduce, The drug reduces local immunity and increases the risk for local infections. So, and I mentioned that already, when it comes to the steroids, Steroids mask signs and symptoms of infection, so you're going to have to watch a patient much, much more closely. Teach a patient to not use this drug as a, um, um, as a reliever drug. This is not the drug to take if you're having acute symptoms. What is a drug a patient should take if they're having acute symptoms? A SABA, such as what? Albuterol. Very important. That's been seen on NCLEX a lot. Teach the patient the correct technique for using MDI. You better know the steps. I've told you a million times. It's been seen on NCLEX where they expect you to put it in order. I already did a video on that. Teach the patient to avoid anyone who has an upper respiratory infection. This type of patient cannot afford to get sick, the patient that's on steroids, because remember, steroids already mask the signs and symptoms of infection. Steroids mask the signs and symptoms of infection. Steroids increase your risk for osteoporosis and fractures. And steroids increase your risk for um, stomach ulcers. You're going to teach a patient to take the medication with food. Why? Because steroids increase your risk for stomach ulcers. So you want to take it with food to make it less likely that you're going to get a stomach ulcer. Teach a patient not to suddenly stop taking the drug for any reason. And here's why. Look at the um, rationale. It says the drug suppresses adrenal production of corticosteroids. Remember your adrenal glands, those two glands that sit on top of your kidneys? Okay, that's what they're talking about. So the drug suppresses the adrenal um, production of corticosteroids, and those corticosteroids are necessary for life. So what happens is, while... As the patient has been taking, you know, the fluticasone or the prednisone or whatever corticosteroids they're taking, right? 
as they're taking those corticosteroids, the adrenal glands stop naturally producing those corticosteroids that you need to live because you're getting it from an exogenous source. So if you stop suddenly taking that exogenous source of corticosteroids, that's going to throw you into Addison's disease because it takes a while for your adrenal glands to catch up and be like, oh, wait a minute. He or she's not taking any exogenous sources anymore. So let me go ahead and start shooting out more cortical steroids. So that can throw the patient into adrenal crisis, which is a medical emergency. So you're going to teach the patient to never stop taking this medication abruptly. Number five, promone. This is um, a medication that stabilizes the membrane of mast cells. Um, it prevents asthma attacks that are triggered by allergens or inflammation. And lastly, leukotriene modifiers. The purpose of this drug is to prevent asthma attacks that are triggered by inflammation or allergens. And the most famous medication for this is a Montaclast, which is a singular. Important things you guys have to know about um, this drug. You're going to teach a patient to take the drug daily, even when they don't have any symptoms. Why? Again, this is adjunct therapy. This is for maintenance. They're not taking this when they're having an acute asthma attack. If they're having an acute asthma attack, what are they going to be taking? A SABA. They're going to be taking something like what? Albuterol. But this is something for maintenance. So even if they're not symptomatic, they still need to take that drug as ordered. Teach a patient not to decrease the dose or to stop taking any other asthma drugs unless they've been specifically instructed by their healthcare provider. And those six drugs, guys, are the... Um, six major drugs you need to know for asthma prevention and treatment. So guys, uh, let me know what you thought about this video. It was very short, very to the point. Let me know if there's anything more you'd like to see me cover, or if you'd like to see me go more in depth on asthma, let me know in the comment section. Please don't forget, if you can do this for me, support me, share my content, share it on your social media platform, share it with a friend, colleague, coworker, classmate, even a nursing instructor. Um, Comment in the comment section, help get my algorithm going, help get me on um, more pages on um, YouTube. What are they called? It's not called FYP. I can't think on top of my head what's it called on YouTube, but um, pages of new viewers. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.